This is a presentation by Atonet and the University of Dundee in Practical Steps in Making Video Content Accessible. I'm Andy and you can contact me at my email address on screen. The difficulties with video presented in higher education is we get last minute notification, we have copyright difficulties, video formats come in a variation in type and size which is typically YouTube, DVD, podcasts and multiple electronic files such as MPEG, AVI, MOV. The process of subtitling or captioning video is expensive to outsource and is often difficult and time consuming with significant amount of coordination and transporting the video source to the supplier. So transcription. All services generally typically recommend you first make a transcript of any video that you're making. An audio typist is recommended. These are kind of specialist skills and rare in the University of Dundee and increasingly rare in the commercial sector um, as most people are doing their own typing in the modern age. An alternative to having an audio type is to use a software called Audio Notetaker which visualizes audio and enables you to transcribe more efficiently if you're not a specialist audio typist. Sometimes it's difficult though to just even play the video so DVDs are quite straightforward, YouTube is straightforward, but if you receive a random file then we tend to use VideoLAN which is a free plugin which plays most video formats that we've found used, used in higher education. Capturing. So really how do you capture the audio? Well we use Audio Notetaker to capture the audio, but we thought at the time a transcription doesn't really say, is very difficult to follow for somebody who's deaf without the visual context of the screen. Hence the reason why subtitles are preferred, but subtitles are more difficult to produce. So with Audio Note Taker, you can capture a picture at the same time as capturing the audio. And as it says, a picture says a thousand words. How often you capture the picture depends on how quickly the picture on screen changes or how much the um, scene differs. If a change of PowerPoint changes, then you would take a picture of that. But if it's purely just somebody speaking and not moving very far from the podium, you may take a picture infrequently. So let's have a look at a practical demonstration. There's some really good instructions and video instructions available from the makers of Audio Note Taker. So let's go and do a live demonstration. So first of all, you need to find a video and here's one for an example. So this is Audio Note Taker and it has a button called Capture Camera, here Capture Screen. But typically we make the screen half screen. So when you half the screen, you can see that you have but you click on the three dots and you've got the capture screen button. So then we need to load up the YouTube video, which we've preloaded. So here you can see it's paused. So what you do, you put that to that half of the screen by simply dragging it across. This works best if you have two monitors or a large screen. So capture screen. As you can see, the capture screen is a grey box. You drag the box over the over the area that you want to do. You then go back to Audio Note Taker, you click on Record, and you want audio output, so that's the audio coming from your PC that you would typically hear on headphones or your speaker PC. You can choose to have your microphone at the same time, but that would only cause confusion. Okay, so you click on there. So then you click Record. As you can see, there's no audio being represented, but as soon as I click Play, Not our planet. you can uh, see now that the audio the is being outputted to audio note taker and being visualized in bars so make sure you clicked in audio take note taker and every time the screen changes press the f12 key on your keyboard as you can see it takes a picture every time the picture changes so we just give them a second so there you go it's a significant change we've now pressed the f12 key and then again we press the f12 key as you can see the pictures are then synchronized to the audio. So that gives you a brief demonstration. When the video is finished, you can click the stop icon and then click stop ending. So as you can see, you've now got the audio, the and the pictures, and then you've got some text boxes. So you can type in text. So if we imagine this we said hello, my name is and then that will record that.
So as you can see on here now, we have the audio and the video. So if you click play, you can... So that's us. And now we see a new... Now we see... I would recommend watching the YouTube video, but the essential things um, from Sonitent on how to caption is that it's a really useful video. But this button here cuts back down the background noise. And this button here pauses after a certain block of text has been written to help you catch up. And these two buttons here increase the speed of the audio playback or decrease the speed. So it's usually useful to go to about 0.8 if it's a complex matter and click on here. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration. The very special thing about our planet is that it also developed a biosphere. And actually it took about 5 billion years. As you can see, it then stopped. There are shortcut keys that you can use to go forward and back onto. Shortcut keys in audio note take a really useful control space, pauses the audio playback, control space, restarts the audio playback. Control backslash and control forward slash enable you to jump between the blocks of audio on screen really quickly. So get familiar with this software. It is much easier than an audio typist or buying audio typing equipment. Um, and so that's audio note taker. So just to have a, show you what one looks like at the end, this is what um, audio note taker looks like once you've completed it. So as you can see, it's a visual method to transcribe audio for a non-audio typist. Work can be passed to an administrator or support staff rather than being a technical staff, as a program is very easily used and quite widely used by disabled students across the university. It's exists in the TU recording, edit, lectures, recordings. I'd say go to the instructions to get familiar with the software. So the output, this is really key for when we're providing information for hard of hearing or deaf students. Um, you can give students the audio note taker file so they can see how much is being taken. The benefit for the audio note taker file is if it's a student with hard of hearing, they can increase the volume and cut here, um, decrease the um, background noise, noise cancelling. Decrease the volume, decrease the speed that they're speaking. So as you can see, it's really an effective piece of software for that. Also, you can. Also, you can output the information as text and pictures only. This is really quick. So we'll just quickly show you how to do that. So go to file. Sorry. So to export, to export information, you simply go to hover over this button here, export, and you can text and images. So you can click images and text and click OK, but if you don't want the images, you can just have text, and if you want images and text, click text. To give you a demonstration of how they look, we have, we have a Word document here. So this is how the text looks. One hint for you to use is when there's background music or other information, put it in square brackets. So that's how the text looks. If we then look at how the text and picture looks, you can see that that's how it looks. And obviously that offers a world of more additional information to the user rather than just a basic transcript. It gives a lot more visual information or being able to read. Ultimately, um, subtitling your video would be more beneficial, but this is a method that can be done relatively quickly without captioning or subtitling a video and synchronizing the audio. So just bear in mind, um, when you transcribe in order transcription plus, it takes three to five times the length of the video clip. And this is a good way to estimate how long you will take to provide transcription plus services to a video. So if you have an hour length video, it will take an administration person around three to five hours to, um, to, um, to provide a transcription plus. Note one hint for audio note taker, when it exports, it creates an, a rich text for, file format, which is a really portable document. The downsides of this portable document is that it's really large. It's about 86 megabytes. If you open up this document in Microsoft Word, and then we save it as a docx document it's about three megabytes in size so a significant saving in space and time to transport the information so copyright issues as with legal 
as is open legal and copyright seek your own legal advice so the law changed in ju 1st of june 2014 in the uk which i think is european-wide legislation but it will be brought into different european countries under different legislation if you own the video though you can modify and manipulate the file and make transcription plus without having any considerations for com copyright pre June the 1st 2014 you would have had to seek permission from the copyright holder so from post 1st of June 2014 it is not required to seek permission subject to if you can buy a, an accessible version that is commercially available at a reasonable price then you can you should purchase that and use that which actually would be generally more cost effective a reasonable price in my opinion and it is only my opinion is the same price that everybody else pays to pay so if it's a dvd and you have to buy a dvd with subtitles a reasonable price would be the same price that you could buy the original dvd from an adaptive version can be made to anyone defined under the equality act as long as it is only available made available to those users you are not allowed to use it for for the whole class so the key to this really the equality act it widens the use to hard of hearing dis um, physically impaired hard of hard of hearing, deaf, dyslexia, um, anybody who's really defined mental health difficulties, um, anybody defined under the Equality Act. You're not allowed to use it for the whole class though, which is a bit of a shame. So you will have to make that available separately to those users. You could do that through your online in virtual learning environment or create a private YouTube channel to upload the video to, and then you can transcribe it if you caption a video or you can just send the students the transcription word document there's a really good one and a half pod, one and a half hour podcast on JISC legal's website which is the higher education support service by JISC who can give you information on copyright legislation in the UK to higher education so We've now got Transcription Plus, which is ideal, but really we want to move on to subtitling your own video. This is really at an early stage at University of Dund Dundee, and outsourcing is our most likely solution at the present time. So first of all, try obtaining a transcript. If not, upload the video to YouTube to a private restricted area. Set the YouTube to auto-produce a transcript captions this can take a few hours because YouTube, depending on the demand, just schedule it to be done. So it's not an instant um, automatic transcription. And this is where it does voice recognition for you. And this can be really handy if you would just want the timings, say you're having to create the timings. Once you, once audio, um, sorry, once, once YouTube has auto detected your language, like voice recognition, you need to correct it with your own transcript. New advancements in YouTube, although it's very new, is well, if you have a transcript, you can upload the transcript to YouTube and it will attempt to synchronize your transcriptions with the voice recognition. So it kind of makes it more accurate and less laborious. Um, as ever, with anything that's automated, you need to check if it's worked correctly. And the way and how to do this is detailed in a Google support YouTube answer and have a read through that if you want to use that technique. This is the second bit of commercial software you might want to consider the first being audio note taker the second is i soft this is the second bit of software i'm going to recommend for you to be able to convert video to be enable it to be uploaded to youtube this will ensure you um this will ensure an easy process for you so we use isi iSkySoft Video Converter and iSkySoft Video Converter Unlimited for DVDs. There's many pieces of software out there and there's also um, a large collection of freeware that may do this for you. The difficulty with that is having a nice efficient interface which is supported and deals with new formats and new um, video encoding DVDs, Blu-rays. So it's around $60 and it's probably worth, worth the money in time savings. Okay. Ensure when you're copying DVDs or other video formats into another format that you're not breaching copyright law. And you can use the exception in the copyright for by subtitling to, stu uh, to students and staff and other guests under the Equality Act 
but you do need to ensure that you're complying with that. So DVD, another hint actually, DVDs with no captioning or subtitles, search for those bands who have transcribed the movie and place the script online. That have placed the script online and also just check that for actresses. Sometimes you can purchase the script and that is a lot more cost effective than, than transcribing the script yourself. And Camtasia software has a relatively easy method for adding captions to any video but generally the videos you would want to are post outputted from iSky software. And yet again there's a detailed instructions on how to use Camtasia which is one of the most easy programs I've used to um, make these online demonstrations and captions. Remember in higher education if you pass this transcription work to a non-specialist administrative support if the language can be really complex and specialist it's more difficult to transcribe than a soap opera so typically you would get the transcript to be checked by a subject specialist. Remember that modified copyright work can only be shared with the users defined under Equality Act. So yet again, you would have to make sure this is restricted access only to people defined under the Equality Act. These are my contact details if you want to get in touch and hopefully you found this um, short podcast informative and useful. If you need any more instructions, please contact me at the details above. Thank you very much.